think it's about time that we prettied up this picture, don't you, fellas? I agree with you. Don't you agree? Yeah. Okay, here's lovely Leslie Gore. <laughs> dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven and by some chance I had brought my dice along and there I stood and I hollered someone fade me but the passengers they knew right from wrong and the people all said sit down sit down you're rocking the boat Said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Or the devil will drag you under by the sharp lapel of your checkered coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And as I laughed at those passengers, I held a great big weight. I woke up, thank the Lord, and the people all said, sit down, Sam, you're rocking the boat. The people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Or the devil will drag you under, with a soul so heavy you'll never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. If you sit down, tell you what I'm gonna do. You'll just sit down I'm gonna build a mountain From a little hill I'm gonna build a mountain At least I hope I will I'm gonna build a mountain I'm gonna build it high I don't know how I'm gonna do it Only know I'm gonna try I'm gonna build a daydream Push that daydream up the mountain slow. Gonna build a daydream, gonna see it through. The mountain daydream, gonna make them both come true. I'm gonna build a heaven from a little hell. I'm gonna build a heaven, and I know damn well. If I build my mountain, I build a hell. Push my daydream up the mountain. Next to Shelley, we would clash something awful, wouldn't it? Yes, you, that's right. The two I colors. wouldn't clash with you. I just removed my coat. Aren't you? Sweet? And I'd let you walk feel on the cross. Feel this material. What is it? Is Wait it a minute. Let me feel what. Feel what is it, Shelley? You would know better than I. It's velveteen. Oh, it's Schmutt. Velveteen. 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 The senator knows velveteen. It feels right. fantastic. It is, is velveteen. It velveteen? Yes. yes. Our Navajo squaws make their the jackets skin. out of that. Really. It's terrific and it's warm. The last time I you I tell you, it looked good from behind, too. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you saw that. We're, fun, we're finding out a lot about the city today, are. aren't we? I just, I just never noticed that. <laughs> did you know what happened last time I was here? You were, you thought you had the mumps, or I did, did you? I did have the mumps. You had the mumps? Well, we were hysterical. Julie LaRose, I called him immediately that's, because he was on the by show. By the way, that's the night Arnold Palmer was on the show. Yeah. Good. He was on the show, and uh, who else? George Carlin was here. And um, Julie called me and said, geez, I hear you have the mumps. What should I do? Well, I found out that men 
are very hypochondriacal. Julie was really Not very scared. Not only that. No, no, no. Yeah. No, it's just well, that a man I... shouldn't get... Man has worse trouble with mums. Oh, terrible yes. trouble. Terrible trouble, I know. And terrible. <laughs> so, you know, they're much more afraid of mumps than women. But I, I, uh, I could have given the mumps to a lot of people. You were very lucky. I've had them on both sides. Wonderful. Yes. I had mumps. Did you? Both sides. Yeah, both sides of the family. Then, <laughs> have you ever had the mumps? Oh, Sorry. yeah. I think they're not attractive. They're not later. attractive. How long were you out of circulation with the mumps? About 10 days. What do you tell your friends, like a fella calls you up and says, uh, gee, Leslie, let's go out tonight. And yeah. What do you say? You don't say that, because that sounds very unglamorous. It certainly mumps, does. doesn't it? It certainly does. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, you know, it's like What do you like want to say? A, say mumps. You have to say mumps. You can't lie. No, you can't. Oh, you no. can say you have a virus, which I did. Did you say my, you had a virus? My telephone service told everybody who called, oh, she's sick, got the mumps. Sorry, she can't talk to you. Oh, that's and terrible. I, yes. Because it does sound that. pretty bad. Sounds very childish. Yes. No, you can't be in love with a girl who has a swollen gland under her chin, you know. <laughs> you most certainly can. Well, well, you took argue part that. <laughs> You'll argue I'd that. I'd argue that. You took part in the moratorium. Yes, yes, I did. Um, I took part in something that I thought was a very, very special day. And uh, I was very proud to be a part of it. I went down to Bryant Park in New York. And uh, there were thousands and thousands of people there. And their expression, the whole attitude of the people there was just wonderful. Everybody was seated on the ground. And popcorn was being passed around. And if you were stuck in a corner, people would move over and they would ask on the people. No PM problems at all? There wasn't... No mob problem? There were no problems at all. The, the crowds were very peaceful and very, very understanding to what the problems were of working outdoors and trying to get all these people on. And uh, I had a very, I had a different feeling about you the moratorium. You didn't feel that you were aiding and abetting the enemy in any way? I kind of felt we were helping President Nixon in a sense. And I saw, and I was very happy to see a lot of American flags there and a lot of people with flags on their backs carrying flags. So I think a lot of people don't feel that the moratorium is necessarily against President Nixon. I certainly don't. You're planning another one in mid-November, aren't they? November 15th? Yes, they are. November 15th, which I'm also taking part in. We have some meetings tomorrow on it, in fact. What uh, are the meetings like? What, what do you discuss? Well, the problem with the next moratorium is to make it better than the first. Otherwise, it will lose its momentum. And uh, I think uh, that it's going to be a large problem because last time was so so nice. It was such a lovely feeling. And we all, we all pray to God that there is no violence during these things because it would certainly defeat everybody's purpose. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about what this young lady has said about that? Well, I, I can agree 100 percent with people like Miss Gore. I know thousands of people that feel the same way, that uh, really got a spiritual feeling out of the, the moratorium. My only argument is that it does tend to give the enemy the wrong impression. Well, and this is very hard for us to understand yeah. because we're used to this. Well, I've thought about that also for a while, and I, I accept your opinion that it was bad timing. But then I wondered, the war has been going on for a while. It could continue to go on for a while. The negotiations have been going on for a while. They could easily go on for a while. In essence, what you're saying is there should not have been a moratorium day because there probably is no good timing for it. Well, in essence, what I'm saying, you'd probably disagree with because, as I said on the program the last time I was here, this war need never have started. But having started, it need never have gone more than six months had we used our force the way that we should use it. And the reason it's been prolonged is because of uh, trying to fight a limited war, restraining our military, and... Uh, having moratoriums on bombings and moratoriums, moratoriums on everything else, uh, I'm convinced that the president is headed in the right direction. Now, I once told him he wouldn't go my direction, but my direction would end that war in a whale of a hurry. Mm -hmm. uh, and I th I'm surprised to find the young people who tend to agree with me. We don't like war. We're very cognizant of the young people's feelings. My mail by 10 to 1 is on the subject of Vietnam. And I just hope that the next moratorium can be peaceful, quiet, and that we don't do anything that uh, can set the whole cause back. Well, I learned one very important thing the day of the moratorium. There is such a thing as peace, and if we ever achieve it, it will be a marvelous thing. It was a beautiful day. It would be. We're all coming right back, right after this.